justified during the last uh, years or uh, decades with having the bad taste of being uh, actually very ambivalent, <coughs> of always colonizing something, actually always trying to put something to a fixed state of possible discussions, something that uses to be shifting, something that uses to be actually in a permanent state of transition, in a state of transition at all. So how, how to take this call of universalism uh, seriously, we asked ourselves, and uh, uh, what would be uh, an ethics to bring it back to there, where we go to and maybe select work or ask people, get in touch with people, get in contact with artists, or broader with intellectuals, with people that uh, are figuring out what is uh, going on with uh, uh, local context, as that's usually called in uh, art speed. And we thought, well, there is some uh, agents that still hold that capacity to deal with that fragmented uh, forms of universalism, to try to find out ways to uh, implement a discourse strategy onto a local situation. And this is often editorials, like people sitting together somewhere trying to create a magazine, trying to create something like a, a platform of discourse, a, a, an online venue, something that is going to be public and that is much more than uh, uh, just forming something like an alternative space or doing exhibitions, displaying something, but really making a step back and try to figure out what our local needs at a certain point, point in a certain moment. So there is a lot of uh, these small scale entities around in the globe and we thought why not ask them to uh, help us uh, finding out what a call for a new universalism might be, how these three themes that we want to think with would be answered on that basis, on, on a local basis, on a basis where local translation in between art worlds, uh, artistic practitioners, practicing artists, the political, the intellectual discourse, and a public that is centered around these fields take place. So the project we designed uh, is uh, really trying to involve these people and Get help and making them help us to find out what the ethics of locality in the process of making a, of the making of a global exhibition could or would be. I mean, art always is shape shifting. It is kind of a twister if it is good. It is trying to get away from these fixations. But in the same time, it can be political. It can make a, a, a something really concrete, and it can make encounter and answer questions that are in the local. What we saw, actually, when we talked to these people during the last uh, year, one and a half years, that are in editorials, in magazines, in uh, radio stations when it comes to Africa, for instance, because of radio is an issue uh, there for uh, bringing some discourses in, uh, in, into regions, in, 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 uh, in West Africa, for instance, or in Indonesia. We, 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 we found out that uh, they have different uh, viewpoints uh, to that what we pose as questions. Our questions come from a development, from a kind of shattered modernist development we are finding ourselves in the Western world and, uh, find, uh, and responses that we get out of something. And we found that the responses, the answers to our questions have been so actually interesting and, uh, 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 and differed so much and that we would really, uh, 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 that we set up a project that goes like follows. I have to say some technical things now because of, uh, uh, that is an important thing. We asked 70 to 80 uh, of these editorials around the globe to actually, uh, before documenta, help us create a kind of, let's say, a research engine in a, in a technical term that is uh, rather uh, common uh, via media who uh, help, help us actually to do that. Uh, let's, find, let's form something like a research a, a, a engine around some themes, not a wiki, not something that o opens up to a discourse of everything, but a research engine that localizes things back to something. So uh, let's try to uh, help us, or let, let, let's get in, into a discourse. So 
we ask these magazines, could you maybe take one or two or three of the main subjects that we want to uh, um, deal with in documented that Ruth just touched, uh, and give that subject to your editorial as a call of, for papers, as a, a call for visuality, as a call for artistic practices and works, as a call into history. How has this been locally dealt with? How has it been locally transformed the thing like modernism? What is the urgence of new institutions? Or what is the status of something like radical contingency that you do? And these people uh, 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 said, well, we are going to do that. We are going to help you. And they are going to publish in their own respective magazines as if they would have posed these questions or these calls for papers to themselves. Uh, articles, they commission artwork, they uh, 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 actually publish historic practices that they think are important and not so much known because of they're not canonized and they don't, uh, not ever have uh, the chance to get canonized because the big art institutions did not uh, uh, find it worthwhile or uh, the, the academia uh, was actually missing or uh, not filling the void. So we ask them, help us do that, publish that, but totally independent of us. So it's just that we pose questions, as if we would come with a curatorial team to, uh, and ask them, could you find select, uh, select artists? So that's what they are going to do during the next two years. They are going to publish totally independent in their magazines. Uh, and we selected mainly uh, uh, magazines and uh, editorials and uh, journals that we have heard from local scenes are influential in the way that they format discourses and give this kind of local uh, value to discourses or to artistic practices. Uh, the second phase is that we currently create a huge editorial office that is uh, virtual, uh, like a content management system similar to that great news agency, uh, great uh, big news agencies use the correspondents from all around the world can correspond into, uh, in, at the moment I think we are having 55 languages. And this is closed to the public for the first phase. So it is just open to the 70 editorials and there discussions will take place. They post texts. Another one, uh, 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 somebody in Argentina might post a text on a historic phenomenon of uh, the uh, uh, going together of political practices uh, in the uh, dictatorship period and artistic practices, and somebody in uh, well, let's say Russia or uh, maybe even in mainland China might find uh, that interesting for the local context and answer with something else. Somebody might talk about we created a new institutions, uh, a new institution currently. So we are trying to figure out what is a reliable new structure within that we can work with, uh, though we have all these local limitations and so on and so on and so on. And this, uh, uh, as it happens for instance in the dance field in Zagreb and in the dance field in Bucharest and in the dance field in Beijing uh, with a small institution, creates something like a space of discussion already there in this closed editorial space. But it is not just about that and that there are texts going into that, it is as well uh, images, uh, videos, audio files, as I said, there's audio streams, and uh, it is a database that is free for, the, for all the magazines take part to, be, uh, uh, to, to translate down into their magazines. So if somebody finds something interesting, we just have the copy left and the, the, the Creative Commons uh, uh, system of uh, uh, copyright uh, uh, that, that, that holds all the copyrights actually clear, they might use it and translate it down into their language and down into their magazine. So this is a process that is not open source, not Wikipedia, but really content orientated and done by editorials and editors and authors themselves. So we don't want to have the public in at that point because we really want to have a discussion in between those people that we thought we think uh, uh, are the ones that should discuss each other. Then there is a third phase of the project, namely that this, as I said, functions as kind of a research engine for documenta. Uh, and 
it actually doesn't just function, it functions as the pre-publications engine of Documenta as well, or the publications of Documenta. Out of that, during the next two years, they're going to publish three volumes uh, of the so-called Documenta magazine, or as I always say with an S, the Documenta magazines, because of there is a lot of magazines helping us doing that, and we are doing three magazines uh, as well with that. And uh, therein we will publish uh, our selection. So that what we, as curatorial of Documenta, think is uh, uh, something that we want to show to the public, to be informed, to, uh, that, that we think uh, uh, local discussions should be actually published or uh, artistic practices that should be shown as uh, a thing uh, to understand what we're going to do in the exhibition afterwards, and what the exhibition will be afterwards. But to uh, uh, not have this kind of curated thing only, namely the magazines of Documenta, which will be printed, there is a second publication that is a print-on-demand publication that is in all the 54 languages. So that you can create your own magazine out of these discourses. It can counter, in this, counter the selection that we did and say, well, there is another selection that I am interested in because of, we, we're going to go upload all the things that happened in, uh, in the uh, editorial closed space and that your editors agreed on to the public. And the public can make its own magazine out of that. And we will print a single copy or ten copies or as many copies as you uh, want us to and send you your personal edited document the magazine that came out of that knowledge engine that we are constructing on the internet. The fourth phase is that uh, is not really uh, actually decided formally how that will happen to involve all these uh, magazines uh, into the exhibition itself and to display this process as part of the exhibition in Kassel. After Documenta 12 has finished uh, in October uh, 2007, uh, we hope that something stays with this process, namely that there will be a lot of discussions, not just about issues that we post, but that there is going to be a kind of a, an international data bank of authors, uh, that there is a data bank of artistic practices that's have been hidden, that there is something really one can see and use. We give it in the hand of the magazines and they can use it themselves, for instance, to solve such issues that are, that are mo the most crucial issues at the moment in this uh, uh, more and more corporate uh, media world, namely the issues of distribution, the issues of possible translation and uh, free speech and the issues of that. What we have, like left from that universal idea of enlightenment, namely to make, this, to make something public, to make things public, to, to create discursive strategies that makes, make uh, to decisions transparent and, and follows an ethics of locality. That's partly that what we are going to do the next two years with the magazines of Documenta, following that what, uh, as I see Ute Meta Bauer and the public, following that what uh, Katrin David and Dr. Inversa did already in Documenta 10 and 11, and opening up, opening up Documenta and artistic practices as they are. They are not just uh, that what you see in art fairs, though they are what you see in art fairs as well, uh, to discourse it, to discourses that uh, are discourses about uh, substantial things of the current, and to uh, globalize uh, the uh, idea of curatorship and finding
Hong Kong during that kind of research process yet. We, uh, we, we are meeting them. Is there a common language in your uh, communication? Is it English? Or? Uh, there is, there is uh, something that is... Uh, uh, that everything has two languages. It's local language. Yes. And we uh, ask people to provide uh, us with a rough English translation. We take care of uh, proper co uh, uh, copy editing uh, of the English translation. We have uh, good translators at hand. We can't afford to translate into all the 54 languages. But as we are dealing with editorials, there is almost in every editorial the power or the knowledge to provide us with a, go a translation that is reliable and that we can work on further. So this is not a problem. We don't work just with general public or with artists who I know sometimes really don't uh, uh, speak uh, uh, English. And uh, there is this famous uh, T-shirt of the Yugoslav artist, artist Mladen Stilinovic, that says an artist that does not speak English is not an artist. Uh, but but uh, usually, uh, uh, as this is, these are editorials, we find somebody to translate into one of the major languages, and therefore we can translate onto English. And on the, in the virtual platform, it will have both. It will have always um, the original language as well. So that um, um, people from from Hong Kong might want to translate from the Mandarin from an article that is published in Beijing rather than translate from the English. So there will always be all all of the translations will also be in the database. And if one of our major technical problems at the beginning was how to find um, a, a, an engine like can deal with this, that can deal with languages that go from up to down and from left to right and from right to left and have different characters. Because that is always, this is a very important point because unless you take care of, um, of this, you, you have again the one center that people communicate with and we're interested in um, initiating this process but not staying in the center. And uh, actually, there is a second point uh, by, uh, uh, on this, that uh, the public, in the end, can help us translate, translate, if they find something in English interesting for there, after we published it, open to make the uh, print on demand, they can provide us with the translation. We would send the translation back to the local editors and say, well, there is somebody that finds this text highly interesting for its con for its or our context. So please help us to make a proper translation and upload it in the in the respective language. So that in the end the translations themselves show what has been of interest for the public that visited us. On a further idea or I mean the, um, about translation, how will that part very fascinating project actually translate into the exhibition or how will it how will be there the communication between this project and the more exhibition ex curatorial project? Um, there are different ways it translates. One is that um, as we get feedback of course we have more information and more knowledge and this helps us to broaden the perspective. Um, Sometimes it gets very concrete that we are, um, through this um, uh, engagement with the magazines, um, show positions of art, individual artists that we find, that we wouldn't have known of otherwise. Um, and then there were most definitely um, representatives of the magazines invited to Kassel. To um, show their magazines to a German or international public coming to Kassel, and all other steps that might or might not be taken as the discussion. Yeah, I, I, I see this uh, attempt to involve people from different parts of the world. It sounds very commendable. Uh, I'm sure something very interesting. 
come from it. And I, I'm sort of reminded of the way that the last documentary team with their platforms in the pre documentary period, they tried to move it around the world. But nevertheless, the, the, you know, Castle is one place and um, where it's much easier for people in different parts of the world to read each other's texts, especially with translation, than it is for them to actually see stuff in one place in, in Germany because it's expensive often to get there. So how about in, in, with the actual exhibition itself? Is, is this somehow a problem that can't be surmounted? I mean, it seems a particularly a problem for you because you're talking about wanting to reach out to new audiences. It's not just a matter about bringing artists and intellectuals from around the world into the discourse, but to letting them well, I, be I there. I don't... Um, I don't... I don't have hyper... No, it's a hybrid to think that I can reach out to audience globally via the exhibition. I think that probably people coming, there is a high percentage of international people coming to the exhibition, but those are basically what consists of art, and the others are art world people. Um, the, the, the majority of the people who come are more locally based. There's a high percentage of people from Kassel. The last one had 650,000, right, Uta? 650,000. We don't want more than 650,000 because it's just unbearable to have to stand in line to go to the loo for longer than half an hour. And it's unbearable to have to fight in order to go into the room to see anything. And it's unbearable the noise that it becomes unbearable in, in a space where there are too many people in it. Something that needs to be considered as well. Um, so we're not out to get more people here, um, but we do. We are out to get um, to have it, have a more intense form of interact of interacting with people. And one thing that I neglected to mention is that we're uh, we formed and we're in the process of, of widening a castle parliament of citizens of people from castle who we we'll discussing with on the issues and on the status of the exhibition and what it means for Kassel because of course Kassel loves Documenta it's a, it's a city that has 200,000 um, people so it's a small it's a small scale city and it's it, Kassel calls itself Documenta city so it's probably, if you go on the website of the city of Kassel you will find Documenta there so it's a tiny city it's one time in the year in, in five years when all the hotels are booked and when the <coughs> restaurant owners are happy and the taxi drivers are happy. But um, other than that, it's a very uneasy relationship because these people don't really know what it, mean, they, what it means to... I mean, they do go and look at the, the words, but it's, it's, a, it's like a youthful that has left it in a way as well. So um, one of the ways we're dealing with this problem is also something I haven't mentioned is that we're going to have young students, high school students, give tours through the exhibition to adults, not just to children. It's not this one of those nice programs where children can talk to other children about art, but we're really going to make experts out of 14, 15 year olds, and these will, if which is in the process of, of, of doing, um, having talks with the institutions, but we're hoping to do this um, Hessenwide, so statewide, um, the area of, of one of the states of, of um, Germany, Hessen. So we're going to have, hope to have people from many, many different schools from a bit farther away as well, not just from Kassel, to come to learn how to guide through this exhibition and thus make themselves experts also. So this is a way of dealing with it as well. Just as well, Noah mentioned, uh, there is a curator of the last document there, which is Professor Uttermet about. We will see more from tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.
China side, by the way. You can also approach me after this. I was almost there around me, but now then you can approach me frankly if you have questions you don't want to place in the public before. <laughs>
especially particularly uh, concerning modernism, I do agree that this debate is not value-free or um, is not free from, from hegemonies and, 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 and power. But I think modernity as such, as, as I, I defined it, can be found almost anywhere. I mean, you always have to take into consideration that we put it as a question, is modernity our antiquity? And even if you think about a post-colonial situation, this question might be relied in a post-colonial situation as well, because of it has been a, stra a strata of modernity that formatted the colonial space somehow. So uh, uh, even if, if you neglect that, uh, as a friend of mine in India said, well, we have such a lot of people that are not, that not even entered the space of modernity, in a way. But uh, even with that, uh, the, the, the question uh, holds this open. Uh, so is modernity our antiquity? And antiquity is not... Are you, are you rather could say that antiquity is not at all a concept that is universalized, so because it is actually referring to the bourgeois notion of the antique that helped modernity uh, be created as a set of uh, epistemological figures. Yeah? So they, 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 uh, I think the term in trouble may be much more antiquity uh, uh, than modernity. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, even there it is that it uh, refers to a, a European situation back where we found uh, uh, actually modernity shattered by a as Ruth already sketched out, and now I'm putting together something like uh, a new terminology or new actually uh, epistema out of that fragments of modernity, as maybe the Renaissance or whoever uh, did that out of the ruins of antiquity or the German Romanticism. I don't know. Uh, here in the Goethe Institute, uh, you might even think about Herder in that respect. But that's a different story. <laughs> Indeed, it's a different story. <laughs>
how Western artists and Eastern artists building the modernity, modernism kind of concept. Do you see big difference? There is a different. Uh, there is a difference of local modernities that you refer to, uh, uh, as said, and that's not a postmodern notion. That's really not a postmodern notion. If I say there is a difference of local modernities, we have to uh, take into account that actually modernity transfers itself into different of local modernities that have their own kind of power relation system built up that have, have their uh, signifying, uh, signifying, uh, signifying systems and so on and so on and so on. Uh, uh, a lot of writing has been done from Lockman's about the new uh, about the novel to uh, Jameson's about uh, uh, the, the, the problematics of the uh, universal notion of uh, modernism. Nevertheless, the term stays as one of the as universalism huh? and as something like an essential position. It stays. It, it stays, and it is probably the only transmission transmissive figure that helps us. Uh, to, to get uh, uh, rid of the notions of total particularity, <coughs> and uh, I, I think there is really a, there is really a, a discussion that we want to open about this, and it, as it, it's opening here, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky that uh, the, the terms are problematic, but they uh, have the uh, uh, fascination and they have their power. So we use, we, we, we use this power, though we are very aware of that how they have been problematized, and so on and so on. And to give a brass but uh, concrete example, the whole relation towards the individual in this question is very different. And um, I, that it's quite obvious that, um, that to deal with the individual in China is a very different different uh, action than to de deal with this in, 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 in Germany, for instance, or the, um, uh, also the styles, to, do, to use sewing and um, stitching and braiding here um, cannot be, can be something that I might consider something very modern, at least something very avant-garde in the context of art. Whereas in the context of Western art, I would to say that's a 70s notion. So those are banal but uh, practical examples. Yeah, um, you put uh, also a great question in another way. Is, uh, I, I, uh, you said you've been traveling uh, around Asia and then you will continue to travel in Asia. Then uh, wh which, which countries have you been traveled and then why you select those? Your selection, is it based on a, a, an assumption that you can open a dialogue with, with artists or with people, art circle there, that can have a dialogue on um, modernity, on the understanding of modernity? I think the choice seems, seems uh, uh, very conscious and sort of uh, significant, maybe. Actually, the choice is not so conscious and significant. I mean, it's significant, but it's not very precise. Uh, we're not UNESCO. We don't have the need to uh, cover to be equal, and we are we're going to be very selective, and we're going to leave out um, areas, global areas, and, or countries, and we're going to lead out leave out many things in in the Western context as well, things that others might consider to be important that are not of interest to us in this particular moment. Um, this is, it's quite clear already that even though we have a longer period of research than most um, exhibitions, our time is much too short. It's much too short to even travel um, extensively. Um, our choices have to do with what we've known beforehand and what artists have said. They have to do with connections to, and what basically also what artists have said. If artists tell us you need to go there, and if there are artists that that we trust, then, then we go there. Then in 
that have to do with who invites us where and what, whether it's an interesting forum to talk to. And also these, so, so, so they're very selective and subjective, these, these, um, these choices. We're not covering um, the majority of countries in the world. No, my, my question is, I know you're very selective, but what are the rationale behind your selection, apart from your existing network? You said, oh, some, some artists recommend you to go to a certain country, but, but you, you see, it seems you rationalize it. Well, we've, we've uh, figured that we need to go to each continent. <laughs> <laughs> And, to different and of course, as one learns, one also changes. So also the network is not a stable network. And the network then, it, it's really um, a situation, whom do you meet and what do the people whom, whom you meet uh, tell you to do? So for instance, um, um, Central Asia is a, um, is a place that I would not have thought so immensely important as I think of it now, after I've seen the Central Asia Pavilion at the Venice Biennale, which was actually the high point of the Biennale, it was the best exhibition curated there and done. It was extremely interesting artwork. So because I've seen that, I know I need to go there, which I probably would have not thought of before. I would have thought, oh, these are small countries. Let's go to the major countries that are where there's a huge discourse that has a huge impact. So in a way, one changes one's networks as one goes along. But we, there's no way, we don't have the resources. We don't have the resources. And um, um, we had, how many curators did you have? Seven curators from all over the world. They, I mean, from many different places. And they, I'm sure you've had the same problem. It's not possible to do so. Because also, you don't want to go shopping for work. I mean, it's not interesting. Of course, you can travel a lot of places and select a lot of artists from all over the place, but what does that mean? Do you understand what you're doing? And um, I've see, I've, since I've come to China, I've learned this expression to go to the doctors. And I've seen this one very funny film where they compare the process of selection of an exhibition, Western exhibition, to this going to the art doctors and the art, artists show their work. It's very, very funny. And even though we try not to do this, we're mirrored in this, of course. There's no way, there's no way you can uh, solve this problem on an individual level, of, even for a big uh, institution like Documenta. It just, uh, you, I mean, it's, uh, it's a benefit to know that you always make the wrong choice uh, if you go to a local, uh, if you go local uh, situation. And uh, actually that uh, uh, even can create turbulences that are productive. So it is not always uh, about uh, uh, finding identities or finding actually the local truths, but turbulences and shifts can be uh, uh, interesting as well. But answering your question uh, towards the project that I'm doing, uh, we are uh, actually there. There's not so many magazines than there are artists in the world, so that makes it pretty easier uh, to deal with the subject or, or editorials or online platforms. And the second thing is that we uh, have some people uh, from other editorials that help us to uh, organize small internal editorial meetings where we invite people from different regions to join us uh, for a few uh, uh, days uh, uh, to actually uh, come together and, 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 and solve tech most, most technical problems and uh, find out what uh, uh, local needs are. But this is happening. So we, uh, we are having one in Bangkok next uh, uh, December, I think. There is one in Beirut in, uh, uh, in a few months, and uh, there, uh, there are a lot. There's one in uh, there's one in, in Chile and in, in Sao Paulo. So uh, this the, the, this is what we are doing. Uh, but uh, as I said, it's one way to answer to, to yeah. deal with that question is just to be more transparent about the yeah. networks. I mean, that, this is something I find really problematic with. Um, the Biennale system around the world is, is, is the elitism of the curator's process and, and the, the behind closed doors way of uh, selection and, and, and never any revealing of, of how these, these choices were made. And when we all know it's based on what you just finally openly said, it's just exclusivity and, and, and networks of friends and a flexibility to open those networks up. 
I mean, if somebody would just say that and then show me the networks, I think it would be a lot less. Because that's, a, I think, it's a, an important point. Well, I think that actually to judge it can be, it can't be judged by the discourse, it must be judged by the exhibition. I think to reveal why something has been chosen is something that an exhibition also needs to be shown. Yeah, I'm not saying real why, I'm real, reveal why, I'm saying reveal how. Yeah. Like, I mean, draw a map, but I mean, it's something as simple as that. It's just never, nobody seems to want to do that. And that would, and at least in a sense, deal with the exclusivity as opposed to just ignoring it and pretending it doesn't exist. Without, without it, you couldn't make any uh, act, actually a statement in an exhibition or uh, in a process. It would be something like... Uh, Network compared with individual totally against each other somehow. Because it's a single fish, it doesn't like to be like together. But when the people stick together, they have their purpose in their way. And somehow, because the way we are and the mentality we are really living and navigating, believing the art scene, we create a lot of things. We talk about propaganda as well. Just like making like the fashion tents in art. So it seems to be a lot of the illusion happening. I can't see a lot of real art, to be honest, with so far. Now, I'm talking about what is real and real. It's, it's not a thing that's for... Uh, for PJ, it's something that is, as you say, is for internal, even a tool or knowledge that can pass on and people PJ, and that is the art. If no one PJ, everybody is a pain again, getting like a power, a network. All the individual can't read, for example, in Hong Kong. Say, the individual cannot live in Hong Kong. Because all about the network. Everything put promotion out to the outside world, we talk about network. The individual is no chance in Hong Kong at all. So I found it's quite contradiction in the way. You know? Well, one of the problems, let me first say that um, this document is not going to be an edition of 120 artists or 254 artists. And um, we're going to try to make um, an exhibition where artworks from different artists um, react or, or, or correspond with each other. So in a way, the art that we select is not as important as what we do with it. And we cannot do what we want to do with it if it's not very strong work. But um, there's always this issue with Documenta about, about the um, um, artist list. When it's revealed in one document, it was stolen. And um, in fact, there was a facsimile published in one of the major magazines. It's a whole thing that has to do with the media and it's also fun. But um, Catherine David, I think, lost her list on, um, on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but this is not about individuals. It's, we cannot hinder people to perceive it that way, but that's not our focus. That is important, an important curatorial um, uh, decision. And the other the other thing is, um, what was I going to say about the networks? Yeah, I want to tell you all about a very concrete problem I have, and that is when I go to places I don't know, and I don't know about the society, I don't know about how power politics are structured and so on, I have a very difficult time to find artists that are female. And I'm sure that there are many, many artists that are female who are very good artists. But when you ask along the networks that are easy to find, um, artists will respond, well, there are a few females who've done some work, but they're not consistent, at least not in China. And then there are these few figures who've be be become accepted in the West who are always posited. And there are the, the people that the male networks um, accept. So they push these few artists, but, um, but really to get a picture of what's going on is extremely difficult when you're interested in that. I wouldn't never choose a, an artist for his or her gender. That's not the issue. But within my own cultural background, I've never had this problem. It's always been very easy to choose um, um, work from women and men, and we've never we've never searched for women particularly because they were there. It was quite obvious to us that they were there. You just have to be interested and you know how 
to how to to find them. And I have I I really don't want to represent in document a situation where it seems that women artists are from Western society and in East, in, in any other place in the, in the world um, it's basically male artists who are good. Um, and I don't know how to go around, get around this issue in the short period of time I have. So actually this is something I'm very interested in if you have any suggestions through that. I'm very open to suggestions on this issue. On this issue. We do have a Frau Museum in, in Germany yeah. which did a very good show, a very good exhibition of Chinese female artists because we only have female artists exhibited there. Don't they have a database to help you? Or don't they have a database to help you with names of artists in every country? In this Frau Museum? Well, the, the Frau Museum is not really an art. I, 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 the, the thing is, they're really based on the idea that because women, the artists are women, they need to be exhibited. And that is a very important thing to do. But that's not my issue. I'm interested in art despite, regardless of gender. I'm just aware of a gender bias. And I don't want to transport this gender bias. So I'm not, I'm not interested in women's art per se. If at all, I would say I'm interested in feminist art because I find feminism an interesting political movement. But I'm not interested in women artists as women artists. Now the thing is what I have also find in China that for a lot of women, it's, it's important to have this label, women artists, because it helps them to, to, to have a platform. So they, they um, actually don't, they're not against this label. It's something that one has to, to deal with. But um, it's, it, this, for me, is a very difficult issue, and I don't know whether um, we'll be able to solve that by 2007.